Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Paul Ricard in the south of France for the third round of the 2013 Blanc Pan Endurance Series. My name is Jack Nichols. I'm going to be commentating for you th throughout this three hour race with the assistance of John Watson, who at the moment is down there on the grid. As I say, it's the third round of the series, and we've already had an action packed opening two three hour races at Monza and at Silverstone. And both were very entertaining, and it means that leading the championship is the Ramos Rigon Zampieri Kessel Racing Ferrari. And Kessel Racing are a team who won here last year. 27 degrees, the air temperature, 36 degrees, pretty much the track temperature. It's the warmest event of the season so far, and that is going to play into the hands of some teams whilst compromising other teams. That's things that we'll get onto later in the race. And there you can see the crowd ready to watch this race. So before we go down to the grid, let's have a look back at the top stories coming into this weekend. ART Grand Prix have had a good start to their season, often being the quickest McLaren out there. And Frenchman Mike Parisi is looking forward to his home race. I am very happy uh, in first to, uh, to be here in France. It's a big meeting for me and I am very happy to uh, work with ART Grand Prix and McLaren at this occasion. I am very happy and very motivated to do a, a very good job this weekend. The speed car team are a new entry to the Blanc Pan Endurance Series here in Paul Ricard. And in Dino Lenardi, they have a GT driver with proven experience in their Audi R8. I know very well the Audi, so uh, for that uh, the speed car uh, take me and uh, put me uh, on the car. I think the Audi uh, has a very good potential to get a good position here. Everything is possible when you have a 60 car at the same time on the, on the track. After winning the opening race of the season and a decent performance last time out at Silverstone, Kessel Racing arrive at Paul Ricard leading the Pro Series. And Davide Rigon is hoping they can keep up their good form. It's a pleasure to be first. Um, we suffer a bit in Silverstone. Uh, in Monza we are OK. So it's nice to be in the front of a 62 car. The championship is very tough, very difficult. I don't know if uh, we can fight for pole position. But uh, our main important thing is to be in the podium for the race. That is our target. Another new entrant for this weekend is regular FIA GT Series team, HTP Motorsport. Maximilian Buk and Luca Ludwig will be joined in the Mercedes by Israeli Alan Day. It's the first time in endurance uh, racing. I came from sprint races. I still race in the FIA uh, GT Sprint Series. It's something new for me. It's 60 cars, you never know what happened. It's a lot of strategy, which is something I'm not really familiar with. I'm looking forward. Whilst the BMWs have been struggling in the Pro class, in the Pro-Am, it's a BMW leading the series. TDS Racing, in the hands of Henri Acide and Lukovic Vadi, come to Paul Ricard at the top of those standings, and Ludovic is confident of another strong performance at their home race. Yes, yeah, the beginning of the season is very good. There is uh, my teammate, we are leading the championship with two other cars. And we are very happy to be in France because uh, if we can win here, it should be a very good operation for the championship. There's another Nissan on the grid this weekend as well. JMB Racing will be in the Pro-Am category. British driver Jody Fannin will be joined by Frenchman Nicolas Mislam. I'm very excited because uh, I am at, uh, at home because uh, I have a workshop uh, on uh, the track. But uh, it's very difficult because of uh, more traffic but very, very good level. Historically, uh, GMB raced with uh, Maserati and Ferrari, but uh, I would like to work uh, with Nissan, and uh, I hope a uh, good result with this car. The ARC Bratislava Porsche 997 of Miro Konopka and Ahmed al Hati won the gentleman's trophy at Silverstone last time out, and al Hati is hoping they can keep up that momentum this weekend. Blanc Pan has been a very good season uh, so far. Monza, Silverstone, um, and I think Silverstone was the highlight for me. It's going to be definitely tough here in France. It's my first time here and we need to find more time. I always do believe that with the Porsche it's always going to be a strong car in the race. So we're really not worried at the moment, but uh, for sure there's more time to find uh, and we'll find it. So earlier on there was a uh, moment's silence held here at the Paul Ricard circuit in memory of Alan Simonson, who of course lost his life last week at Le Mans. And also, unfortunately, this morning, Andrea Mame lost his life in a Lamborghini Super Trofeo race here at the Paul Ricard circuit. And as a mark of respect, the Blancpain Lamborghini writer uh, squad have 
withdrawn both of their cars from this race and everyone from the Blancpain Endurance Series and SRO would like to extend their condolences to both families. But we have a race to be getting on with here in Paul Ricard, a three-hour GT spectacular with just short of 60 cars. The race director has decided this will be a safety car start. So here's a look at the grid. From front to back, there's the two McLarens alongside each other. Very good qualifying from the 23 Nissan, the JRM car. Peter Dumbrecht qualified well and will start that car. Then we've got the first of the ART McLarens on the right-hand side in their home race, the Von Ryan Racing McLaren there on the right-hand side as well. The first of the Golf Racing McLarens on the left-hand side. Then the first of the Phoenix Audis, number six there on the right. Really struggling to get the best out of the car. Uh, Oliver Jarvis, Christopher Haas and Harold Prima. Christopher Haas will start that car. JMB Racing 555 are entering a Nissan for this race. This is their home race, literally, because their factory and workshop is in the center of the circuit here in Paul Ricard. There's Enzo Eads, uh, Phoenix Audi as well, further back. The Vita 1 BMW there on the right-hand side. Bit of a disappointment because they looked very, very quick in free practice one. They were running within the top ten all session but couldn't pull it out when it mattered in qualifying. There's Ahmed al Hati, who we heard from in the pre-show in car 66. And then right down at the back of the grid, we've got Sport Garage. Mikhail Petit will start that car. And alongside it, the Porsche of Delahaye Racing which Christian Kelders will be starting. And that's the rather daunting view from the back of the grid down to the front of the grid. So the race gets underway. The safety car pulls clear. And the cars head off. And the three hours has begun. The safety car comes in and the race proper gets underway here at Paul Ricard. Yama Berman leads them across the line. It's Klaus Hummel behind in the... Black Falcon Mercedes, but right behind him is Maximilian Buch. Buch might be looking to take second place on the run down into Turn 1 for the first time, and he's managed to do it. Caught Klaus a little bit unawares, and Maximilian Buch in the HDP Motorsport entry moves up into second place, and soon Davide Rigon will be attacking Klaus Hummel as well. He's got the McLaren of Parent right behind. On board we go, running down into Turn 3, and Parent not close enough this time but the McLarens are some of the quickest cars in a straight line, and there is going to be the move, I think. The Kessel Racing Ferrari gets past Klaus Hummel now. Alvaro Parent will follow swiftly through as they all wind their way down through turn three. The hairpin at the bottom end of the circuit before they wind back up onto the Mistral Straight. The SMP Ferrari is attacking there, but I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the Ferrari and the McLaren battle going into the chicane. Indeed, with well, Alvaro Perez trying to get a slipstream off the back of the Ferrari. The Mercedes had started on the front row of the grid, of course. Klaus Hummel is a bronze driver, and he's been bullied literally by all the pro drivers around him. It was a great job by Adam uh, Christodoulou, who'd get that car, the, 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 the gold driver in that Pro-Am uh, partnership. But, of course, he's not going to be in the car until later this afternoon. An awful lot of pressure being put on this Nissan. We're looking back at the uh, Kirill Ladigin. We're on board with Wolfgang Reip. But you can see Ladigin was just pulling away a little bit. And this is now uh, Klaus Hummel has lost out know, to way, Frederic Vavich. Yeah, I mean, in a sense, it's almost a relief because the pressure of starting at the front row of a grid of any motor race, and especially a race of 60, a field of 60 cars, never easy, as we say. Lamaro Brent once again trying to find a way around that Ferrari of David Rigo and not having very much success. And I doubt he will have much success unless the Ferrari falls to summer in this opening lap or two. So, on board we are with the Portuguese driver, the very experienced McLaren driver, part of the McLaren factory team, essentially. Worked on the development of the car an awful lot, but Yama Berman streams across the line. There's the battle for third place going on, and behind we've got Klaus Hummel now about to get passed by the uh, second Mark VDS car of Henri Moser. Moser pushed right out onto the uh, outside of the circuit and can't get through. They are battling over eighth place at the moment. Frankly, I don't know whether Klaus Hummel was aware the BMW was coming down the right-hand side of the track, not the side you'd anticipate an overtake to go. Uh, but now, as they break down into turn three, even the BMW is coming under a threat. But uh, Nick Homerson, well, he's not able to make it stick. But you know, the, the Mercedes, Klaus Hummel, is acting as a roadblock 
Now he dives down the inside, oh. tags the back of the Mercedes, and that's what's going to happen. You're going to have a traffic jam as the BMW hops, skips and jumps, not only tagging the Mercedes, but taking some of them too. Body work off over the kerb in that uh, turn, uh, four, turn, turn, turn five. So that's a real shame for Klaus Hommel. It was always going to be a difficult job for him. And oh, and Limping I think Henri Moser, yep, yeah, Henri Moser might have trouble here. The Mark VDS car is crawling, right? Right rear puncture. It's, a puncture. it's the right rear puncture. When he yeah. hit the curb, hit it in, in an aggressive way. I think he hit way. the car again. I think, he, he, I think he hit Hummel again. He, he may well have done, but certainly the contact of that or the going over the curb responsible for that tyre. So it's deflating. And uh, two cars uh, unnecessarily, in my opinion. There could have been a little bit more cooperation. There's no doubt that Henri Moser was the quicker of the two. But of course, when you're in that pressure situation, you've got the blinkers on. You maybe don't have time to look in the mirrors and be aware of faster traffic coming through now coming under pressure, and there you can see the, the puncture for Henri Moser, so still not a disastrous weekend yet for Mark VDS Racing, and well, here's a look at the replay, he put it up the inside, is he clo is he far enough alongside, that's the question, I guess. Uh, in reality, no, but it was, but the, the tag itself wasn't the problem, it was, it was here. up here, it's, it's somewhere in that incident going around the back of the Mercedes, that then the tyre got uh, damaged, and that's why it's lost all the, the air or nitrogen as they put into the tyres these days. The gap now across the line was just under two seconds and still remains 1.9. Yep, lapping very similarly on that last lap. Uh, Yama Burma was a tenth of a second quicker than Maximilian Buch, and that's all. Here's the battle between the Nissan and the McLaren, and Peter Dumbreck has got it done. A good move there to go around the outside of the Vevich. Uh, sorry, it's uh, Dumont starting that car. So that's Peter Dumbreck up into fifth position in the JRM Nissan. As these cars stream across the line. Non-stop. And there's battles all the way through. But it's Yama Berman in the Mark VDS BMW who has the lead at the moment. This is going to be a, a long three hours for many of the drivers. You can see the field is in part because we had a uh, rolling start behind the safety car. is much more strung out than you would anticipate from the, the normal start that we'd expect in the Blancpain event. Look, down through the field, you've got <laughs> seven, eight cars all squabbling over virtually the one bit of tarmac they all want, and it is going to be rough, tough in there, the Aston Martin, Ferrari, Mercedes, what else is there there? For, just a lot of Ferraris, and the Porsche, you know, yep. trying to elbow its way past. This is, uh, this is all lower down the field, just trying to figure out where. This is all over about 34th position, I think, essentially because we've got the uh, Porsche in there, of, uh, which is being driven at the moment by Xavier Massin. They'll be down in 38th place, which is disappointing. We just saw the Mark VDS BMW has made it back towards the pits. The race is still, what, only 12, 18 minutes old, and everybody is still oh, there's shuffling a around. I'm going to dive down the inside from the Gulf McLaren, takes a place away, and uh, it, it's just, it's, this is like your worst traffic jam, but it's happening at very high speed and you can't really watch every part of your car, front, left, right, rear, whatever, there's just so much traffic. Once this sort of gets, draws breath, and the gaps you can see here coming down the straight, I mean, it is absolutely, I mean, it's almost a driver's nightmare because he doesn't know what to do unless he gets a clean, clear overtake at somebody. All you're gonna do is put yourself into jeopardy if you're not certain you can get the job done, but this looks like a, an overtake from the McLaren looking to come a long way around the exit out of turn 9B. But by the grunt from the Nissan, the McLaren can't do anything about it. Yep. It is seen. The McLaren may have a small advantage, but it has to drop back a little bit, otherwise it loses time force in the nose. It's Rob Bell in the McLaren, challenging Wolfgang Wright all over 12th place with then the 88 Ferrari in front. And there's the move from Rob Bell. Good stuff, saw that move and planned it nicely and he goes through and now he will try and chase down Nick Homerson. Meanwhile, the two RJ and Nissans go side by side. This is the recovering, or not recovering, but recovering from a disappointing qualifying, Alex Bunker. He goes past now as we go back on board with Wright. And that is Alex Bunker, his teammate, now up in front. And Wright is running fourth in class. And the Frank Stippler Audi is involved in there as well. And in fact, the Audi's just got past the Nissan, but the Audi is really struggling in a straight oh, line. Look at this. Look at that. I mean, that was a bit of blocking there. Suddenly, the Nissan just drags up and overtakes the Audi down the left-hand side of pit straight. 
and looked like there was a bit of defence coming from Frank Stipper, but he realised the speed that Nissan had. There was nothing much he could do. It was coming through, and it's a big car. And there was a yellow flag in that corner, apparently, because of this MTEC Ferrari that is in a bit of trouble. Rob Bell's done it again. Yeah, Dived he... on the inside into turn three, I think that was, and uh, makes a good, clean pass. Good motor racing coming with this bunch of cars just outside the top six. Yama Berman still leading the way. Everything is fairly standard up at the front. Yeah, I mean, it's basically everybody's got a two and a half second gap between first, second, second, third, third, fourth. So all the action that we're watching here on screen is coming in the midfield where one car may actually be the catalyst of allowing five or six or seven all to join into this sort of long train of cars. And uh, until one of them can make the break, then it's going to be pretty much nose to tail. And if you find yourself out of position due to a poor qualifying but a much better race pace, that's a real problem. You've just got to be patient. You can't force issues, particularly where contact can lead to a pit stop. It can lead to, we saw just earlier in the race, where the BMW got a damaged tyre, and uh, that was just due to light contact. There's the Ferrari going around, under-braking into turn one. And that, that was really as much under-braking that he lost control rather than uh, actually in the corner itself. Yeah, it was a, a curious one. And, uh, oh, it's a bit hot in there. The aircon's not working, so we'll open the door, says well, Klaus Hummel. Yeah, that's got to be a pit stop. And somebody drives literally and he's driven off the racetrack to stop. Now, is he going to get out and close the door? Or what's he going to do? Because he cannot reach it from where he's sitting in the car. Well, he's decided... It looks I don't as though he that's stopped to reach across and he, realised he couldn't. He can't. There's no way. I mean, there's that. he'd have to have arms about six and a half feet long, <laughs> or put it into modern terms, just under three metres. So. We didn't do meters in school, and there he drives way, way again. Really strange. I mean, what is mean? he looking for a marshal's post to try and get somebody to close that door for him? But if he's trying to find a marshal's post, he's not succeeding. He's oh, got here, he comes, oh, here, here he, comes. he comes in your own time, mate. Yeah, well done. Now, are we going to see a Sergio Jimenez? Oh, it's open. <laughs> I think there's a problem with the latch, as they say, and uh, he's going to have to make it back to the pits and have a. Let's put it in this way, it's going to come under the 12-month, no, it's a three-year warranty in one of these. <laughs> so the pits will be removed and uh, yep. frustrating. Now, this one is our race leader, Yama Berman, the Mark VDS machine. Oh, and there's the Haribo Porsche out of the race. And uh, we think it just pulled off, unfortunately. So that's the end of the race for uh, Christian Menzel, Emmanuel Collard and Mike Sturzberg. And there, unfortunately, is a problem for Henri Asseed. Looks like he's had a bit of contact on that front left. Yeah, a bit of contact. You can see the carbon fibre. Oh, Here it oh, is. Okay. Oh, I wasn't contact. That was, well, you know... Barge. <laughs> I got to see your world rally, what do you call it, wrestling, and that was a real wrestling <laughs> manoeuvre. I mean, up against the ropes and still sticking it in him. I mean, that was aggressive overtaking, and uh, no doubt will also rile the stewards and uh, may well suffer a penalty. The penalty, of course, here is uh, compounded by the fact of the damage that you've done to your car. Interestingly, uh, just Jalbor Berman in the last couple of laps has managed to pull over half a second over Maximilian Book in second place in the Mercedes. Here comes the challenge then, down into the chicane. Matt Bell up the inside of Antoine Leclerc, and through he goes. So Leclerc's lost a little bit of pace in these in these last couple of laps. Yeah, I mean, if you get overtaken, it can be unsettling, and then you're sort of you're looking in your mirror rather than looking ahead. So you're driving left, right in the mirrors, and there's no real interior mirrors in these cars. So that you know, your your concentration and your focus sometimes can begin to look rearward rather than keeping ahead of what uh, what you need to do. So uh, Antoine Leclerc, who did a great job, by the way, in Monza, the opening round of the the Pontar series, you know, just maybe struggling and suffering a little bit from the pressure of that uh, the golf racing uh, golf racing McLaren when it made its way through and then oh and there is oh and there is the uh, yes. number five McLaren yep. the leader of the pro-am class has had a little bit of a trouble now is that a spin for David Dumont or is that well that he, looks, he wasn't with anyone was he I he think was, that's a turn 14 I don't know how he managed to get it out there well I do actually because if you come off turn 11 uh, and then to turn 12, if you're wrong off 11, then you can find your way actually getting it all wrong by the time you get to turn 12. Rob Barth in the 88. Von Ryan racing McLaren is now into the lead of the Pro-Am category and up into seventh place. It also promotes Kirill Ladigan 
to uh, sixth overall. And there is the 16 Phoenix Racing Audi. A long, long way down the hoarder of uh, Marcus Finkelhock in 22nd place. This is how difficult it is when you're the race leader to try and get through the, the gap traffic. is down to yeah. a half a second. In fact, it's less you than that. See, yeah. Side by side, so Maximilian Book has really benefited from the traffic right now, literally in the slipstream. Let's look and look, he's on the outside going up into scene curve. The battle for the lead of the race. Maximilian Boot is right with Yama Berman then as they head into the triple left-hander, triple right-hander, I should say, at turn 11. Yeah, no doubt the traffic that these three cars, these two cars have just had to get through. It looks like uh, Yama Berman was the loser. He managed to get things, I think, under control. Maximilian Boot did have that run out of turn uh, turn 10, up to turn 10, I should say, up into scene. And uh, so now it's a little bit a little bit of breathing space for Yalma Berman, albeit maybe less than a second, but it was better than it was about five corners ago. And Alvaro Parent has closed in on both of them. The gap uh, between him and the race leader is now 3.7 seconds. But for Yalma Berman, it's again a worrying time. He's got to assess where can I get past the Porsche, first of all, but not let... Maximilian Book behind me and the Mercedes take advantage. Let's watch as they come down into turn three. And, well, Yalma Berman's doing the right thing in that he's not trying to overrun the Porsche. He knows the Mercedes can't do anything either because he's using the middle of the racetrack that Maximilian Book wants. Now he's got to get himself wound up to get the BMW ahead of the Porsche as they come onto this scene straight, riding this in the, the Porsche. Yep, he's about to be lapped, so what's he going to do here, Ahmed al -Hadi? He looks in his mirrors. Pass me, pass me, he's saying. So what size of the BMW? It's got to go down the left-hand side, go past. But the Porsche's got good straight-line speed. Yeah. And look, you see almost the Mercedes now getting up alongside, but the BMW on the inside, into turn eight, gets the car stopped. Oh, now the long the McLaren. player right the Mercedes, can it get the advantage on the exit? No, the BMW's got it. The McLaren parked almost on the apex there of the corner. He's now, going, Book's going to try and get in the slipstream in the Mercedes. And then Paul to the inside, going up into scene. This is a bit of a strange manoeuvre. He's done it. Books what, pulled it off. What Brilliant. an amazing! Well, that was opportunistic, but well thought out by Maximilian Book. Alvaro like, Perez right with them now as well. What a move from Max Book. I didn't want to believe he could do that, well, but he managed to pull it off. The scene's not a place to overtake. The, the trouble is, Alba Berman didn't have the straight line speed to get ahead going into the scene corner. Maximilian Book got the slipstream off the car they were lapping and just stuck it up the inside. And by the time Yalba Berman got to scene, the Mercedes was ahead and he was compromised simply by just being in the wrong part of racetrack, but also not having the speed at the point he needed it. And of course, this is allowed Alvaro Perez and the McLaren, the Hedges McLaren, the lead McLaren in this race to catch up now to the tail of Yalba Berman, who has led this race up until the lap we're on, coming up to the conclusion of lap 18, uh, lap 17, and uh, so it is now Mercedes, uh, BMW, McLaren. The BMW comes into the pits, yep. Yalba Berman. So second place car into the pit lane now, and uh, this will be ultimately part of a three-way battle for who will actually lead the race once the first round of pit stops are concluded. Have Hex has done enough, as they've done in the past, we know how good they are, but Mark VDS, again, top professional team, and they're not going to lose a second if they can avoid it. So Mark VDS are right at the top of the pit lane, literally right by the entrance to the pits. And, uh, you know, it's so we'll oh. oh, and that is Christopher Haas in the Phoenix Audi. He was running in 12th place, just ahead of his teammate Marcus Winkelhock. Well, he so won't hopefully be now. they didn't come together. So there is Stefan Dusseldorp out on his first flying lap. We assume, maybe it's now his second flying lap. In fact, he'll have had that lap at the time that we saw the car leave the pit lane. So fresh tyres, of course, car will feel refreshed as well as having a fresh driver behind the wheel. You put on new rubber and all of a sudden uh, the car is transformed and it's from a, it's the end a, of a long one-hour stint. It's a drive-through penalty for Kirill Ladigan for contact with David Dermont. So Kirill Ladigan in the SMP Ferrari will have to take a drive-through penalty. So of the leaders, the last man to pit is Maximilian Buch. Out of the pits now comes... Now that's interesting. The Mark VDS car is going to come out behind the Hexus McLaren, is it? It's going to be tight. 
No, no not, not quite. Just looking, getting an eye for the time for Steph Dusseldorf. And Look uh, at that, very close. Steph Dusseldorf now right up behind the back of the three car, which is now in the hands of Bass Linders. So this is the battle of a net second place. He's got to punch now. He's got to make his move as quickly as possible. Buzz, there he goes down the inside. Can he get alongside cleanly? Yes, yes. he does. Good pass. Well done, Steph Dusseldorf. Bass Linders, of course, on an out lap, is inherently going to be marginally more cautious. Staff Dusseldorf, who has had the benefit of one or maybe two laps, car has settled tyres at working temperature. But you know, he's not he's not all over and done because although he's got ahead of the BMW Baz Linders, he's in the position to try and pick up the slipstream as they come onto the Feast Rail straight. Still running close behind the back of the McLaren. Comes out to get a little bit of down the inside, but not close enough to have a serious attempt to take that position. Basically, he just we joined the track in and lost in the space of three quarters. Into the pits then comes Maximilian Vuk, the race leader. Here he is on screen now. He is going to hand over, I believe, to Lucas Ludwig. Climbing into the car. Well, yes, it is because it's not Alan Day, so it's Lucas Ludwig taking over. Interesting. Lucas Ludwig, I should say. Tech Dusseldorf's last lap on fresh rubber, obviously with more fuel on board, compared to the real leader of this race who just come into the pit, Maximilian Vuk. Two tenths of a second quicker than Mercedes hey. was on the McLaren. So Mer this is the Mercedes is doing a good job on worn or used tyres, albeit with a lot less fuel on board. Okay, so Luca Ludwig we saw getting strapped in to the HDP Motorsport Mercedes. And so it's all going to be about that pace from Steph Dusseldorf that John was just talking about. Is that outlap pace enough? for the Hexis to get past into the lead of the race. He's yes, already got into easy, second place. Easy, because he's coming through the final corner onto pit straight, and the Mercedes is just beginning to... There it is. Hasn't even begun to have... They've got all the wheels and tyres changed. Been a disaster for the team. They're only now getting the final wheel on. The McLaren has gone through there. Yeah. We can see oh, it. the door's open. The door's open on the Mercedes, and that's a disaster. Absolute disaster for the HDP squad. The door popped open just as it drove past our commentary box, and that is ruin their race because they'll have to stop and get it shut. Well, he's not going to stop around the racetrack and get a marshal to stop. He's going to drive back to the pits. And, Ooh. of course, the aerodynamics of the car and everything about the car and goodness knows what's going on within the cockpit, in the helmet from young Luca Ludwig. He's got to be careful. What he doesn't want to do is come back at race speed. And, and there we see Maximilian Buch, well, you know, uh, Dominic, Dominic, Dominic Barman, I beg your pardon, looking absolutely frustrated and, and perplexed that why did the door that wasn't the door that the driver exited and entered from, why is the one on the other side open? Yeah, yeah, that's true, actually. Is there a virus going around with these doors? <laughs> Here we go, then, across the line, then. Dusseldorf is now leading the race for Hexus McLaren. Second place, then, is Bass Linders, who's staying with Steph Dusseldorf at the moment. Third place is Cesar Ramos, about five seconds behind the front two. So there you'll just see the red Kessel Ferrari at the back of the uh, at the back of the shop. Yeah, all three lead cars running in the two minutes 08.6 to 8 seconds. So there's very little to choose between the first three cars in their lap time. But of course there's a little bit of a gap between second and third. Mike Parisi, the ART Grand Prix McLaren, has done a brilliant job to be able to fifth place because the ART car were kind of running lower reaches of the top 10 but Parisi's now guiding them up into 5th place then Nico Verdonk is in 6th in the golf race in McLaren Lawrence Van Thor is the first of the WRT Audis in 8th uh, Luca Ludwig after side his door problem side. is in ninth place here comes Bass Linders coming down the back straight and this should be the move for the lead oh the McLaren's good on the brakes there isn't it I'll tell you what it certainly was on the brakes later than Bass was Bass of course on the inside had to slow down more because of the acuteness of the corner he was about to approach. And that allows Steph Dusseldorf to be able to run that a little bit later and uh, then have the advantage of the point of turn. And again, that's the 69 car. It's been flashing since pretty much the early part of the race and it's still flashing. I don't know, oh, he's got no, it's both of them going. In fact, he's on the, the flicker in the car to tell these cars that I'm coming through. I'm a quick car, I'm in a battle and uh, please, and respect my race, I'm not doing anything to upset you. And it's Nico Verdonk who's actually trying to close in yeah. on Mike Parisi. There's only 1.7 seconds between them. There's been a bit of a, 
a sea change up at the front. Look at all of a sudden, Steph Dusseldorf has pulled out a big old lead over Bass Linders. 1.6 as they came across the line. Uh, add another four seconds, uh, four tenths in the yep. second sector. So it's well, that, uh, two it's seconds it's now, strange, the gap. The, the, the last lap, actually, Bass Linders was quicker by two tenths of a second. Linders is only four tenths clear of Cesar Ramos. So Ramos has been closing in, closing in, and now he is finally right with the BMWs. And here comes Ramos. Well, Ramos has got a great run a coming great out run. onto the Mistral straight. He looks for the outside line as they come down into the chicane. Linders will have the inside. We've seen him be poor on the brakes. And the job is done. Easy peasy. Cesar Ramos in the Kessel Racing Ferrari Championship leaders up into second place. But the there lead, is the Hex's car. But more importantly, they're in the thick of all this traffic. And they've only got half a second advantage. In fact, is the Ferrari the in front? Absolutely the Ferrari's right. in front here. Yep, Cesar Ramos has got through. So Cesar Ramos in, in the 44 car is now in the lead of the race. Somewhere through all this traffic, the Kessel Racing Ferrari has moved into the lead. As we cross the halfway point in this race, the leaders of the championship are now the leaders of the race. And the, uh, the team hanging out of the pit wall to try and see whether it's true or not. When they come past, they will get confirmation that well, Cesar Ramos, in a brilliant stint, has moved into the lead. Absolutely, and I mean, the, the key, I'm sure, has been, once again, the, 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 the sort of the flock, if you like to call it, of, of cars, there's maybe eight or nine cars all <laughs> battled. There's, there's the reaction. Yeah, That's yeah, David yeah. A. Uh, Regan there. Yeah, no, he's delighted by that. And uh, you see the McLaren now, it's got trapped by the, the, the lap cars and happy meeting them at difficult parts of the racetrack, still stuck behind that Audi, and uh, well, he will find that frustrating. Steve Jans' uh, Black Falcon Mercedes is a back marker. It's a very quick back marker because it was on the front row of the grid, but it is a back marker nevertheless. And as they stream across the line, this is ultimately the battle over sixth position. Verdon, as I say, and uh, Alexander Scribin. They're also Lawrence Van Thor's with them, but not really keeping up the pace. But this will be real frustration for Nico Verdon. It is, because, you know, you're pushing your foot through the foot belt to try and get more and more performance. And the Mercedes SLS ahead of you is just pulling away under acceleration. And it's just doing sufficient to, to put it into that zone where you can't quite make the, the dive down the inside. Now, he can close up possibly as the under pressure Oh, there's a look from oh, Scribin. Did he go? a great pass. And look also. The other McLaren side by side now. Verbeek is going to yeah. go through. And what a big, what a, well, but how did Verdon get that one so badly wrong? Well, uh, it looked to me as though Scribin might have actually gone over the inside of the corner. Maybe it was just the camera angle, but he has now made the move anyway up into sixth position. And Nico Verdon has lost two places. Verdon was really focusing very much on the Mercedes, trying to position himself to get past it, and he forgot that he's got a very aggressive and racy Ferrari looking at every opportunity, but it's the McLaren, the Pro-Am car, which is doing the, I mean, outstanding job here this afternoon. It's got to be a, a candidate, in my view, if there was a driver of the day, well, it's got to be that gentleman in the McLaren right now, he's trying to get alongside, he's gone alongside and taken the position from the front. Well, oh, and how good is that? There's another McLaren. That's uh, Carlos Cray, who has gone off there. Uh, Yep, Carlos Gray in 49th place has had a bit of a moment. So Frederic Vavich then, throughout all that, is now up into 6th place. 7th place is Scribin. 8th place is Verdon. And 9th place is Laurence Van Thorpe. And I mean, they're going nuts. These <laughs> four cars are sort of scrapping amongst oh, themselves. But Laurence Van Thorpe's just been removed from the fight because he's been given a drive-through penalty for not respecting the track limits. Steph Dusseldorp in, in the, the pits. pits. And <laughs> we've commentated together too much, I think. <laughs> Dusseldorf in the pits, as is the Mark VDS uh, car. Maxime Martin taking over, so it's a bit of a straight pit stop fight, this. Alexander Sims getting into the car. Hexis and Mark VDS are fairly close together up at the top end of the pit lane. So which car will be coming out first? We expect it to be Hexis, but if things don't go to plan, if they end up with some McLaren starter motor issues which are issues that they've solved now but ran into a lot last season well we'll soon see because the belts are being tightened down alexander sim just making 
Whatever the adjustments he is done with his right hand as the lead Ferrari continues. Coming up to the two hour mark, minus three and a half minutes. So Cesar Ramos did a great job to take the lead from that lead McLaren, the Hexes McLaren, and has driven a pretty flawless stint. So uh, we'll hand over whether he's coming in this lap or he'll continue. I mean, I would certainly keep him out there in the car. He's got the momentum. And here comes, now that's a greatly reduced gap. Well, it's probably about three and a half seconds, the gap between the Hexis and the uh, and the Mark VDS. So I think odds. it's a very similar gap as it was before. That's the other Mark VDS flashing through. And then there is Maxime Martin. Now, what kind of pace can the Belgian ace pull out of that BMW Z4? That's going to be the interesting thing to watch. Now, this is interesting because Hexis Racing are trying to lap Marcus Pautala here. And, the, and, those, and they are battling for second place with Maxime Martin. And Pautala in the number four, Mark VDS, is holding up the number seven Hexis at the moment. No, he's, he's going to have a chance if he plays it correctly. Out of turn two, get the run into turn three, but he's not really close enough. Let the gap open up between the BMW and there, yeah. Oh, look at that. Well, I think the BMW let him go through in the end. He did. But uh, Alexander Sims, unhappy with um, that. Well, you know, racing drivers, if you, if you thought he was happy, you'd be criticising him. But if he's unhappy, he puts his hand up. Ferrari still staying out on track. We're over the two, but under the one hour remaining. And the Ferrari, as long as he got fuel in this car and he's still able to run, he's running in the high 208s. 208.9, 208.8, and that's with traffic. So he's in the groove, he's got the rhythm, and uh, the longer he can stay out and do these kind of times, then the less pressure there is when it comes to Daniel Sampieri to get into the car and uh, hopefully continue the progress. And there we see Ferrari now. This time they are awaiting the lead Ferrari. 44, says Ramos. Makes his way down into turn 14. Gets out of that corner, and then he will peel off on the exit. There it is, into the pit lane. Okay, so into the pits comes Cesar Ramos to hand over to Daniele Zampieri for the final stint of this race. Let's hope everything goes to plan in the Kessel pit stop. As John said, they've really improved their pit stops this season, having struggled a little last year. Ramos is in, Ludwig stays out. He's going to be handing over to Alan Day when he comes into the pits. But let's focus on the Kessel pit stop. That was a, That's a risky, bit casual, risky isn't, it? <laughs> isn't it? I mean, what was that engineer thinking he's doing? A car coming in and he just sort of meanders across. So Cesar Ramos undoes the belts and uh, tumbles out. And Daniel Zampieri gets in. And the crew allowed to assist with the, the belts. Crutch strap, of course, fundamental, getting that into place. Then the shoulder and lap straps are attached. So they go together, and then connecting up the radio and all the other connections. In some cases, there'll be a drinks bottle that's going to be plugged in. Sometimes the driver takes it and searches it himself. Other times it's done for him. There is the McLaren, Alice Alexander Sim. So can Ferrari get this job done? And uh, it's going to be tight. Yeah, I mean, it's not a walk in the park by any means. There is the McLaren. So there's Sims is. coming into the final corner, Absolutely. actually. So this is a little bit tighter than we perhaps anticipated. And this could be an opportunity for Alexander Sims to move into the lead of the race. Out of the pits goes the Kessel car. They are right at the end of the pit lane. Here comes Alexander Sims now. The battle for the lead of the race goes the way of Hexis. They've managed to pull it around in the pit stops. And Alexander Sims now leads. Well, he's done a good job. He struggled to get past some of the back markers, but he finally did it. One of the BMWs was, let's say, not as cooperative, but he's finally got through. And now, with all the good work in the pit lane and some strong laps from Alexander Sim, again running in the high, two minutes, 8.6, 2.8.7, 8.8. .8. And disappointment for the Ferrari, who had a comfortable advantage over the rest of the field. They've lost that time primarily in the pits, but of course, it's all about in laps as well as it is about out laps. Up into scene curve comes Sims leading the race. Then second place is this 44 Kessel Racing Ferrari now. Oh, fire in the garage! Fire in the pit lane. 
And well, well the marshals are on the spot Where did that to come sort from? that out. And uh, well, that, that was the sister Kessel car that had come into the pits. I think the triple one car of Giacomo Petrobelli. Mm -hmm. but that was uh, dramatic for a moment there, wasn't it? Certainly it was. To tell where it was Francesco Castellacci yeah, who came into the pits. It's difficult to tell us what actually caused the. the They're going to carry on. This, well, it looked as though it was almost a, a coming from one of the. I'm sure it wasn't a tyre, but it was very much in the garage, wasn't it? Was in the it, garage, indeed. Now, whether you know, very often your brakes get extremely hot, whether when they took the wheel off, I don't know. I'm just trying to second guess. Yeah. Certainly, that was dramatic drama. All they. Ferrari team and uh, well they've got to work on it and uh, the extinguishment you can see over the back of the right rear of the car. The last thing you want to see is a, a fire in a garage. So if it gets control, it's pretty unpleasant. So Castellacci hands over and out of the pits goes the car and now in the hands of Andrea Ciccato. Everyone is okay which is good news. Into the pits then has finally come car number 88, Jordan Grogor handing over to Leon Price. So that gives Max Martin the clear air, but he's got 11 and a half seconds to find in 40 minutes, so it's a big one. Uh, well, but if you can find the... If anyone can do it... Look, there's no question if Max Martin could get what the remaining 39 minutes of this race in relatively clear air... There's no doubt he can ebb or eat into that advantage. But, you know, getting there is asking for an awful lot. It's out of his control. It's going to be simply about where you meet traffic, how efficiently you can get through it. And there is the Belgian, Maxime Martin. Well, look, you can see, look at the gaps. One lap, lap 69, 2.8 seconds. Yeah. So... That was that. Well, that was that last lap. That was that last lap with all the traffic. So you know that's the key is just managing the traffic, reading it, making sure you use it, and uh, don't run up to the back of a group of cars at a particular part of the track, such as coming into the chicane where you've got four cars ahead of you and you're stuck, and everybody else is just completely free to run up to the tail of your car. Uh, Zampieri, one lap ago, he thought he had the lead of this race on the exit of the chicane. This time the gap is, what, the best part of three, four tenths of a second. I'm afraid to say, for this race, the uh, the 44 Ferrari has now been removed because there's a 10-second stop-and-go penalty for car 44, which is that second-place Ferrari of Daniele Zampieri for pit-stop infringements. So, presumably, in that chaos with the fire, they did something that they shouldn't have done and forgot to put a tyre down gently behind the line or, or, or some infraction well, like that. That's that's disappointment because the entire Ferrari driver lineup have done a stunning job all afternoon. And there you can see the frustration, the disappointment on, on the pit wall. My and apologies, it was the other Kessel I thought it was, yeah. yeah, it was the other Kessel Ferrari that had a fire, so yeah. I'm not sure what the pit stop infringement no, was. Know that was at all. But clearly there has been a technical or a regulation infringement. So the 44 car battling for second place. He's going to have to make a drive through in less than 20 minutes now of this race remaining. You can see the look of disappointment on the face. Cesar Ramos, who did a blinding job. We didn't get to see what might be a reason for that infringement. So puts Maxime Martin into quite a good position. Because when the Ferrari peels off, is he trying to get a... He's still trying to get past, though. I don't Absolutely. know whether Zampieri's been given the information because he's got alongside going into the long right-hander of six and seven. And not look, quite close enough, though. Maxime Martin just out of camera shot. There he is. Whoa, so he's going to get second place way, now. Way wide and Here comes out. Martin. He's going to move up into second place. And that's a... Well, just took advantage, really. Although the Ferrari's got good straight-line speed. We saw Bass Linders couldn't hold the inside line under braking for the chicane. But Max Martin can. And he moves up into second position then. So... I mean, that's helped us a little bit because that removes Zampieri from the lead battle, both on track now, yeah. to reflect uh, the top stop-go penalty he'll have to do. So now it's between McLaren and BMW for the lead of this race, with 18 minutes to go. Here is Zampieri coming out of the pits, having served his stop-go. No, he's just coming in to serve it now. 
So this will be interesting to see whether Stephen Kane moves up into third place now. This is a time stop go. Yeah, 10 seconds. Yeah. And the only good Sam news Pierre. is that he is literally at the end of the pit lane, so... And is that Stephen Kane there? It yes, is. it is. So, so Stephen Kane up in the third yeah. position now. But it'll be interesting to see if we've got a Mercedes just getting in front of the Ferrari. Can Sam Pieri, with the pace that Ferrari has had, can he reclaim third place? Can he put a challenge onto the Nissan of Stephen Kane? 16 minutes remaining, and uh, it's all getting very exciting. Maxime Martin, of course, in second place. 1.3 seconds behind the lead, Alexander Sim, McLaren. Still a lot of racing in these closing moments. And there's an off. That is the 42 um, Audi of David Halliday for Sainte Lock Racing. So he was running not towards the front of the order. Uh, 40th place, David Halliday was running. Oh, he's got a... He's got a right rear, left rear puncture. That's more than a puncture. It's gone, isn't so it? So either he, either he had the puncture or that's... Oh, there's the lead! lead. Maxime Martin has moved into the lead of the race. He's done it out the back of the circuit, uh, or in the final sequence of corners where we saw he was... He's done it at turn 11, hasn't he? Well, he's, he's, done done things. he's coming, he's coming out of seat, and he must have got the run down the inside. So let's look and see. Here he is. How oh, much quicker he is out of seat. And then Alexander Sim, does he have a problem in the middle of the corner? He just runs wide, and then Maxime Martin, yeah. so much more grip, can keep the McLaren on the inside. And Alexander Sim, because he's on the left-hand side of the track, is powerless to stop the, the, the BMW from coming through Baz Linders. Well, Baz, there's a smile on your face there, and that was a great <laughs> bit of motor racing. Didn't even look like it was going to be possible, but Sim got hung out to dry on the outside of Turn 11. And there is our Pro-Am leader, and David Dumont, despite having contact in the early stages of this race, is still leading the Pro-Am category. You can see the standings down at the bottom there. He's a minute ahead of the 32 Nissan in the hands of Steve Doherty. Yeah, and remember, there's only been two drivers in that car this afternoon. True. No, Frederick Berviche and uh, David Dumont. I mean, that's a tough afternoon to work for a two-driver race, so... They've done a superb job. Here is our leading gentleman. And at the moment, at the wheel of that number 20 soft rev Ferrari is Patrick Guzelard. The car he shares with Jean-Luc Public. And they are comfortably ahead of the second place gentleman's car. The final corner on this 5.8 kilometer Paul Ricard circuit is turn 15. The checkered flag is being readied. Mark VDS Racing and Maxime Martin see the checkered flag and win the third round of the Blanc Pan Endurance Series. Bass Linders and Yama Berman embrace. Bass is the teammate, the team boss. Great second place for Hexis. They'll be over the moon with that. Alexander Sims. Alvaro Perent and Steph Dusseldorp coming across the line in second. We can hear from Maxime Martin. He's down in Parc Ferme with John Watson. Maxime Martin, congratulations. How pleased are you with that result today? Yeah, it's fantastic for the whole team. We had two bad races at the start of the season. Now victory, so we come back for the championship. And uh, yeah, it's great for before Spa and it's great for the team. I think it's a good, a good moment to win. Let's have a look at the results then. After 81 laps of racing here at Paul Ricard, it's a BMW on the top step of the podium. The top five positions all filled with five different bands. It's the Mark VDS BMW of Linders, Berman and Martin taking the win. Dusseldorp, Sims and Parent second. And then a good 40 seconds back to Lucas Lewis, Stephen Kane and Peter Dumbreck. But that JRM seem to finally be getting on top of their Nissan. A shame for Rigon Ramos and Zampieri, but I think they'll still be leading the Pro Cup points. Ludwig Buch and Alan Day, fantastic debut to the season for them. If they're out in the Spa 24-hour race, they will certainly be a force to be reckoned with. And also, big shout out to SMP, sixth place for them, for Alexander Scribe and Alexei Basov and Alessandro Pierre Guidi. But the big bad news of the weekend was WRT, really. Ninth place finish, the best they could do. Ortelli, Vanthor and Rast, and there you can see Dermot and Verviche in 11th place, winning the Pro-Am Cup. Then we've got the 32 Nissan, second in the Pro-Am Cup, and that was in the hands of uh, Steve Doherty, Mark Shorsitsky and uh, Alex Bunkham. 
Mark Henrici, Masson and Sule managed to finish in 14th place. And then third in the Pro-Am Cup was Gottfried Grasser, Gerhard Theresa and Harry Prochik. There you can see the number six Phoenix Audi, a pro lineup. Oliver Jarvis on the podium last weekend in Le Mans. He, Christopher Hass and Harold Primat can only manage 17th in the race overall, just ahead of Goudi Vanillet and De Moustier in their number 12. ART GP McLaren and then the other WRT car Nicky Mamanov, Rahul Fry and Matt Halliday down in 21st place as head of the other Mark VDS car of Pautala, Moser and Piccini. This really is a podium of the teams that are back in business. But Bass Linders, team manager of Mark VDS, driver of Mark VDS, lifts the trophy aloft. The drive of the race, for them anyway, was Maxime Martin taking that victory. And a big cheer, the top step of the podium. David Dumont and Frederic Verviche. So a very successful afternoon of racing for the Gentleman's Trophy. Thank you very much for joining us here at Paul Ricard. Make sure you join us for the Spa 24-hour race coming up at the end of July. But from myself and John Watson, goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.